Colonialism never ended. Uh, colonialism is not those kind of images you have of white men in pith hats talking to the savages in different parts of the world. Colonialism is the absolute basis of everything in the West, right? That is that is from 1492 onwards, um, the domination of the globe by European and uh, American powers. That's what colonialism is. And if you look, you can see very clearly that, that is still uh, what the world is today. I am Kindy Andrews, Professor of Black Studies at Birmingham City University and author of The New Age of Empire, How Racism and Colonialism Still Rule the World. One of the key myths that holds everything together is the idea that the West is built on these three great revolutions of industry, science and politics. And I mean, that is exactly a myth because that's what it is. It's a complete delusional fantasy that misses out the fact that, yes, those were important to the development of the West, but equally as important and probably more so important were genocide, slavery and colonialism. And because we don't tell that dark side of the history of the West, we don't understand why we're still seeing racism today. So if you think about when the West emerged, it emerged in 1492 when Columbus sailed the ocean blue, when he goes completely the wrong direction and ends up in the Americas, it opens up a whole new chapter for the West and the world. It allows European expansion into the Americas, that allows for the population explosion to the Americas as well. It also allows for gold, silver um, in Latin America, and then obviously transatlantic slavery is able for 300 years to build the riches that the West is, is based off. Right? Without that move into the West, there really is none of what we have now. So though industrial revolution, for example, is based almost entirely of commodities produced in the transatlantic slave system, um, cotton, sugar in particular, and that wealth is the wealth that's necessary not only for industrial progress, but it's also necessary for European expansion. And so really without racism, there is no industrial progress. There is no democracy. This idea there is a hierarchy with white people at the top, uh, black people at the bottom and everybody in between is the defining feature. It is the thing which unlocks Western progress. So everything that we currently have couldn't have happened uh, without racism and white supremacy. The new age of empire refers to the current moment we are in, in a system of, of Western imperialism or white supremacy. This age is, is deeply connected to the other ages and the same logic that applied then applies now. White lives in the West are, are valuable and those of black and brown in the underdeveloped world can be exploited for labor, resources, etc, etc. There's been a shift since the Second World War where things look a lot different but actually are really, really the same. So prior to the Second World War is when you had direct colonialism, you had the remnants of slavery, like really obvious colonial violence where it would have been very difficult for anybody to tell you that, that, it, that it wasn't racist, right? It would be very, very difficult. After the Second World War, the European empires essentially collapse, right? Because there's lots of protests, there's movements, there's liberation movements, and they, and they collapse. And so because of that, it looks like there's more freedom, right? You have independence in African countries, Asian countries. Um, you even get race relations legislation in, in places like the UK. So it looks like there's been this big shift, this big moment. There's universal human rights, there's the United Nations, etc. Um, but actually, this is just a new age of the same old thing, the same logics apply. The best way to explain this would be global inequality. If you do GDP per capita, which is, you know, the best measure of global inequality, you can see very clearly that Africa is the poorest part of the world where most black people are, and the West, uh, where white people live, is the richest part of the world, and then there's this hierarchy in between. So even today we can see the global economy is based deeply on those old logics of empire. So to say the new age of empire is to explain that this is just a continuation of what has been happening uh, since 1492. I mean, the stat, which I always come back to, is that a child dies every 10 seconds because they don't have access uh, to food, right? Like literally, the child dies every 10 seconds because they do not have proper access to food and water. All of those children are black and brown. If there's one thing that will say, like what's give you the most life chances is where you are born. If you are born in the under, in the developed world, if you are born at the bottom of the totem pole, particularly uh, parts of Africa, your chances of literally surviving, of life and death, are so far removed from if you are born in the UK, the West, America, etc., etc. That's the biggest form of inequality. The fact we don't talk about global inequality in racial terms should tell you the problem, because actually global inequality is clearly is clearly racial, like it couldn't be in, in any other way. But we have a framework for understanding it where we, we've taken race out of it. The other way that you can see the legacies of, of empire in the West, so for people here, the people like myself, etc., um, you can see that in the inequality within the West. So certainly I'm extraordinarily privileged and 
anybody who lives in the UK is in the top 20th percentile of earners globally. I think that's one thing we often forget. Most people in the world don't have an indoor toilet. The conditions here are not any way remotely the same as conditions anywhere else. But when you are in the West areas, you can still see that same hierarchy. So that black at the bottom, white at the top, and everybody else in between, very, very, very clear. If you look at something like the racial wealth gap, if you look at educational attainment, if you look at even the experiences of privileged people like black professors, you can see there's a very, very, very disadvantage. So over the summer when we had the Black Lives Matter protests and you saw the killing of George Floyd, there's no other way to explain how the police treat black people generally, but particularly in America and here, um, other than to say it's based on the same racial stereotypes, same racial views, same logics of empire, um, which, which existed 200, 300 years ago. So the way the new age of empire is managed, it's moved away from European nation states with empires who have direct control to a US-led, um, global institution-dominated way of managing the world. But it's not a coincidence that after the Second World War, you get the United Nations, the World Trade Organization, the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund. All these things are set up to say, well, look, how are we gonna manage the next, the next phase of empire? They look global. All countries in the world are in the United Nations. Lots of countries in the World Trade Organization, the IMF gives out loans around the world, etc. So they look global, but actually if you look at how they're managed, um, all of them US-led funded, but US and Britain designed. Um, whereas the control in these institutions, the UN in particular, if you look at the Security Council, everybody's in the General Assembly. Security Council has five permanent members. The only one that's not in the West is China, right? But even China now, you could make a strong argument, is very much in the West. Very clearly, the, the power of these institutions is in the West. And if you look at what they've done around the world as well, the World Bank in particular, who will give out loans to developing countries, but those are loans with very, very, very clear strings attached. You have to open up your economy so that, that the West can feast on it. And this is what's happened around the world. It's led to many, 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 many of the problems that we, that we currently have, the third world debt crisis, et cetera, et cetera. So these new institutions are how global inequality is managed. And in, fact, in many ways, it's more efficient than the old age of empire because in the old age of empire it was violence it was you'd always have resistance there'd be struggles against that uh, whereas now it's become the norm of the way that we do things this is what development looks like you go to the un for help and support uh whereas actually places institutions like the un uh the purpose of them is to maintain the racist status quo the world can only be as equal as a knowledge that is built upon and the knowledge of the world is currently built upon is deeply racist in its foundation and its application. We've literally built the image in the world of white supremacy and then wonder why people are complaining about racism and wonder why we're still having the same problems again and again and again. The only really way to overcome this is to understand the nature of this society. And racism, white supremacy, is the most important feature of this society. And once we get there, then we can start to unpick it, we can start to undo it, and we can start to say, well, actually, it isn't enough to get a few black people employed um, as professors, for instance. It isn't enough to get a few black politicians. These things are not changing anything. These things are just are, are just continuing racial oppression. And once we understand, we need to stop doing all of these things and start looking seriously at the way the society is structured. That's really the only way that we can go forward. This isn't just an issue for black and brown people. Like racism means that we suffer the most, definitely 100%. Um, and if you look, any statistic will tell you that very clearly. Um, but the reality of, of capitalism is that that quest to dominate, that quest to accumulate, that quest to just spread across the world and, and to restrict resources is what's led to the environmental crisis, right? I mean, it, there's, in a very real way, the West cannot carry on the way it's been carrying on because to carry on the way it's been carrying on is would be literally to end, would be to end the entire world. This isn't a moment where we can just look at, at the issue for black people and for brown people. It really should be an issue where we look for all of us and say that actually something dramatically um, needs to change. Maybe once you realize that, you'll get the buy-in you need uh, for everybody if you want to make some transformative change. Thanks for watching and if you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to the Penguin YouTube channel uh, by clicking here. Uh, if you would like to buy my book, there is also a link in the description down here. Uh, thank you again and remember that revolution is necessary.